Today on Pro Church Daily, we're talking about building a church media team from scratch. Well, hey there. Welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you're going to get a daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we try and navigate the biggest communication shift that we've seen in the last 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills. I am joined as always by the boss man. It's Brady Shearer. And today we're talking about building a church media team from scratch. Alex, If you're listening or watching to this episode of Pro Church Daily and you are a one man or one woman band at your church, if you wear multiple hats, (laughs) if you feel like the number of tasks and responsibilities on your to-do list is becoming a little bit too much Uh and you're ready to have someone else join you, then this is the episode of Pro Church Daily daily for you yeah if you want your church media communications and digital social media team to get to that next level eventually it's going to have to succeed beyond just you to you and others and this can be a daunting task i know it was for me at pro church tools i was so used to doing everything myself yeah and then you get to a point where if you want to get to where you want to be it can't just be you anymore you've got to invite others into the team and onto the mission and now well, that's exciting until you have to actually let them do something and you're like, that's not how I would do it. Yeah. And maybe they're not skilled enough and maybe you're, it's a, a, a tough thing to do. Yeah, and I think that this is always this is always a tough thing to do for, for multiple reasons. I know in my own experience in church, you know, when you start doing something for the first time and, and you know, I think about Pro Church Tools and how, you know, you just started writing blog posts and then you're starting all this stuff and, and it, it was your idea, it was your baby, it was your brainchild and then and then all of a sudden you realize that you're maxed out and it's like, but but this is mine, I don't, I, I, I feel like I can't trust somebody with this. It's like, th- this is hard. And then there's also other times, you know, the other layers of it where um, y- you're, y- you you know, you need volunteers, you know, you need help, but you look around y- your church and you feel like there's nobody willing. It's th- th- There's nobody lining up at my door saying, hey, can I help? And there are so many reasons that this transition, um, g- getting from a one-man band to uh, a team is hard. But I really do think that some of these steps are going to help a lot. Here's the bottom line. No matter how big a church you have, no matter how skilled or unskilled you think the people in your church may be, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Let's first talk about two misconceptions that I have heard again and again from church leaders. Misconception number one, you need to find people that have experience. There's that old saying in leadership that it is, you know, you're not looking for the skills, you're looking for the attitude. Mm-hmm. And and I really do believe in that principle because the first hire I ever had at Pro Church Tools was a guy named Mitch. And Mitch, before working with us as a video editor full-time, worked at Best Buy where he sold iPhones. Right. And when I brought Mitch on to be a full-time video editor for video announcements, for clients paying hundreds of dollars per month, creating graphics, working in Adobe Premiere, uploading, exporting, he had zero experience. and. When I went through the process with him that we're about to share on this episode of Pro Mm -hmm. Church Daily, within just 72 hours, he had done his first series of video announcements on his own and delivered them to clients. And they didn't know that it was him and that it wasn't me because he kept that quality up. You don't need to have someone who knows a ton about social media to bring them onto the social media team. We're going to show you how. Misconception number two. I'm too important, and the only things I can delegate are negligible. (laughs) It's so easy to think that I can't hand something off because I am the linchpin in this operation. And without me, it would all fall apart. I understand why you feel that way. I know what it's like to feel that way because I did, Mm -hmm. but you gotta hear it from me. Someone who's done it, it's just not true. And if you truly want to get where you say you want to go, you've gotta invite others into the operation. Here's how to do it in three simple steps. Perfect. Step number one. The first thing you wanna do is audit every single task and responsibility that you are in charge of and place those tasks and responsibilities into one of two buckets. The first bucket is stuff only I can do and the second bucket is stuff others can do. Now, let me make this disclaimer. You are going to feel compelled to put most things into that first (laughs) bucket because we all think that we're more important than we actually are. Right. Be very vehement and diligent when it comes to placing items, tasks, and responsibilities into that bucket of things only you can do. Mm -hmm. There should only be a small handful. Most of the tasks and responsibilities that you are in charge of should be able to fall in that bucket of stuff others can do. Right. I know it might be hard, but trust me. If you are uncertain, if something feels like it's on the fence, default to the stuff others can do bucket. Just the way to go. So that's the first step. Step number two. 
take the tasks and responsibilities that you put in the stuff others can do bucket mm-hmm. and create an SOP for each one of them. Now, an SOP is an acronym for Standard Operating Procedure, which is a fancy way of saying an exhaustive, intricate, detailed outline of how to accomplish that task. Right. So with Mitch, I did this with video announcements. Mm-hmm. I took the process of offloading a recorded video announcement onto the computer, bringing it into Adobe Premiere Pro, cutting it up, editing the audio, editing the video, putting it on a green screen background, adding graphics, and then uploading it, exporting it, the correct settings, mm-hmm. creating the email, zipping it up, sending it to the client. It was like 75 steps, <laughs> it was 14 pages. I created a full video screencast yep. showing everything that I would do. Mitch watched it through three times, practiced twice with me watching him, and then he was able to do it from there. There you go. The problem with this way of doing things is that you have to be okay with spending a significant amount of time up front. Yeah. And this is the tension, right? You are super busy and you need to offload tasks and responsibilities to others. But the only way to get there is to work harder than you right. already <laughs> are to create that SOP yeah. to then offload it. So yeah. it's gonna require an extra couple hours up front, but that's gonna save you yeah. dozens, hundreds of hours in the weeks and months to come. Yeah, it's so worth it. And you can create these these SOPs in so many different ways. You mentioned because uh, you know editing pro video announcements from start to, to finish is kind of a lengthy process. You did um, written documents, but you also did a full a full screencast. And then there are things at church like you know making the coffee in the morning, like at our church, where all I had to do was make a single page document and and put it in the the cupboard in the kitchen where the coffee is and so you know anyone can can get in there and follow those instructions simply uh those standard operating procedures and make the coffee in the morning and so um you know some tasks will require a lot more work than than others as far as creating these sops but like you said uh the 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 small although it feels like a a big investment the small investment that you have to make to create these uh in order to to transition uh in a healthy way in a proper way uh, it's exponentially it's just it's just going to save you time and effort and and everything good um, in an exponential way in the future. Short-term extra work, long-term freedom. Yes. Final step, the third step to making this all happen. Delegate the tasks and responsibilities in the stuff other people can do column with the SOPs that you have now written and give those to the first person on the team. So at first, all I did was hand off editing video announcements to one person. Mm -hmm. This year, the big thing that we're doing is we've created a full product team of designers and developers. I do not even run this team now. And they are the team that's in charge of running and creating Nucleus and Storytape and our paid platforms. Mm -hmm. Because it got to the point where I realized that I was really good at creating the content, like the Pro Church Dailies, but I wasn't as exceptionally skilled at the UI and the UX of these platforms as our product team is, who have been doing it for longer than a decade and have worked with some very big platforms. Right. They know way more than me. And it's crazy to even think that we've gotten to this place where we have a full product team that our support team will go to directly and they don't even have to talk to me and things are happening without me even knowing they're happening. Mm-hmm. And it all started with me just saying, Mitch, can you edit these video announcements? because. Right. I cannot do all of them myself. Yeah. And this is like this snowballing effect. And what's great is that a lot of the time we end up delegating tasks in church to others and we give them like the bottom of the ladder like stuff. Right. Like, hey, if you're ready to serve, could you stack the chairs and take the garbage yeah. out? Because we know that's pretty hard to screw up. <laughs> yeah. Right? And the, it's so easy to delegate. Yeah. It doesn't require the work up front. And I'm not saying that you can't delegate those things. But if you truly want to build a volunteer team that feels acknowledged, valued, and most importantly, needed, mm-hmm. where they are an integral part of the operation, where without them, the operation could not run, you need to be able to give them things that give them autonomy, that make them feel valued, important, and needed on the team. And that's how you create a team that's willing to buy into the mission because they know that they're a part of it. They're not just getting, you know, the the tasks that nobody wants to do. They're getting the tasks that are exactly needed for the operation. And when we have that autonomy and that value, we're more willing to buy in because someone first bought into us. Right, and you know, after you've made your buckets and decided what tasks you're ready to give away, and then you get to step two and you've you decided what tasks those are and you start making your standard operating procedures, you get to step three, you're ready to delegate things. If you wait to delegate those tasks until somebody comes into your life or your ministry mm. that, and this goes back to one of your misconceptions that, that, that we talked about in the beginning of the episode. If you wait until somebody comes into your life or ministry who has adequate experience for those jobs, 
jobs, you'll be waiting forever. Mm. And 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 so yeah, you know, like Mitch, when when you decided to hire Mitch, you needed to take some, take some stuff off your plate. You know, he he didn't have the the expertise said video announcements. You could have asked him to like go get your coffee and like go do your do your laundry and do, and do stuff that you know he knows how to do, right? But instead, you're like, no, like although he doesn't have the expertise for this, like I'm going to choose to hand this off mm-hmm. to him. You know, he grew in it. He learned it very quickly. And here he is how many years later? And it's the same, you know, for, for, for most of us in this office. And so it's the same in church, you know, look at, at people and don't just look at where they're at and give them tasks accordingly, but see the potential in their lives mm-hmm. and see like, yeah, I can give them a bigger task than what they're ready for and we can learn through it together. And, and you know, that's going to take weight off your shoulders and things off your plate in the process. A bonus resource to check out. The book that influenced me the most in this process was a book called The E-Myth Revisited. Highly recommend that you read that. It was the book that allowed me to make that first hire, to take that step to expanding the team beyond just myself. And that'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Daily. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Pro Church Daily. We'd love it if you subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video. And if you like this video, why don't you take your cursor, find the like button, and smash it. Smash it! We'll see you next time. (laughs) Did I get enough in the middle? (laughs) Come on, we're not wrong. You're not wrong. Hey! But you're not wrong. Thanks for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button.